Hello and welcome to another episode of Sabina has something to complain about. In this case, I have a complaint about myself. I've been alerted that I lack nuance and I think it's a fair criticism. So today I want to offer you lots of nuance. You can even take two if you want. I've been worried about the problem with academic research ever since I became part of it about 20 years ago. I didn't accidentally say that I became part of the problem because that's exactly what happened. Then, about 10 years ago, I wrote a book about what's going wrong in my own research area, the foundations of physics. But I'm afraid that the problem also befalls other disciplines. It's a failure of science to self-correct. Science is failing. It's failing right in front of our eyes and no one's doing anything about it. My book is called Lost. They forget yours. I'm not good at it. Why the fuck is it my fault that cranks think I'm their best friend? because I'm pointing out that there's no progress in the foundations of physics. It's a fact. We haven't made progress in theory development for 50 years. We still use them. Is not that 50 years is a long time, not just because I was born in the 1970s and find that offensive, but also because it's plausible that progress slows down as a discipline becomes more mature. Problems become more difficult. The easy things have been done. Experiments take longer to build and become more expensive. No, the problem is not that it's taking so long. The problem is that physicists have tried to make progress with methods that have failed over and over again for 50 years, and they're still doing it. They're still using methods that don't work, and they're still not learning from their mistakes. They aren't taking into account the evidence which clearly shows that their methods are not working. And that's a failure of science to self-correct. This is why this worries me so much. It shouldn't happen. It's a community of tens of thousands of physicists, intelligent people, mostly, who have for half a century used methods that evidently do not work and they continue to do it. What I think these past 50 years will go down as one of the most embarrassing episodes in the history of science. I can't stop physicists from continuing this insanity, but I can distance myself from it and I can draw attention to the problem and that's what I'm doing. The reason this worries me so much is that I think this is a systemic problem caused by the way we organize academic research. This means it can happen in other disciplines and probably does happen. This is why I don't trust scientists. I can't, because I've seen in my own field that thousands of them might pursue for decades what's obviously pseudoscience, like arguments from naturalness or the so-called women miracle. Hell, just the names tell you that this isn't science. It's numerology, like, you know, the diameter of the pyramids in inches is 600. It's all in the published literature. Do you remember how physicists were arguing that the LHC would see evidence for supersymmetry before it turned on? Didn't happen. Did you hear any of them explaining why they were wrong? No, I haven't either. And I really think they should find out what went wrong there before asking for money to build an even larger collider to look for more stuff that doesn't exist. I don't blame individual physicists or research directions that this happened. This is where I disagree with Eric Weinstein. I believe that the problem is caused by community reinforcement and the way that academia is funded. I don't want to I don't know what caused the problem. I can only speculate. But it's not a speculation that we do have a crisis in the foundations of physics. It's a fact that we haven't made progress with theory development for 50 years. People who work in the field will often try to tell you that, oh, we've learned this or that obscure mathematical fact, and it's all so very exciting, and soon, soon there'll be a breakthrough, and you'll have no idea what they're talking about. You'll think it's just over your head, so better not ask. I want to strongly encourage you, please do ask. Ask them what it's good for. Ask them what we've learned from it. Ask them what we can do with it. Ask them why your taxes should pay for them producing papers. I think they owe you an answer. I get hate mail every time I talk about this. Some scientists don't want me to mention this because they say it fuels the fires of science deniers. It does, but that's because science deniers are right. 
when they say that academia has a big problem. Ignoring this problem won't make it go away. We need to talk about it and we need to do something about it. And it should give you a pause that scientists and certain YouTubers don't want me to talk about this because they're causing a lot of pressure on other scientists to toe the party line. I don't give a shit what others want me to say or not say as it were. But then again, I also eat instant coffee powder with watching. See you tomorrow. You've been asking me for several years to talk about Stephen Wolfram's theory of everything. Wolfram is a computer scientist and mathematician, probably best known for the math software Mathematica. But he also has the ambition to explain, well, everything. And he wants to do it with computer code. His theory of everything is basically an attempt to put the simulation hypothesis on solid mathematical basis. He's looking for code that will produce fundamental physics as we know and like it with gravity and the particles in the standard model. Wolfram is a curious case because he's not your average crank. He understands the mathematics he's using just fine. And yet physicists have paid basic Basically, no attention to his ideas. I'm not sure why that is, but I have a guess. His basic idea is that the universe operates like a computer program. It has very simple rules from which the laws of physics emerge. And from those laws, everything else that we see follows. It's a m when I look at this today, I honestly think this research program is going very well. And I think it's about time that physicists pay a little more attention to it.